So good evening, everyone. What I'd like to talk about today is the uh, Eaton Elite Mini, which I used in the park recently. Recorded about a 40 second video of a couple of things that came in with that. Um, I don't think I've ever really talked about this radio um, here, so I thought it'd be interesting to give it a go. It's an interesting radio. It's certainly not for everyone. It certainly isn't a replacement for a larger one. It comes with this little leather case. I think it is leather actually. And I often carry it around because it will fit in a. This is quite small. I mean, you can see how much smaller it is than, you know, the PL330, if you look at it like that. Um, so this this will fit in your, you know, in a pants pocket if you want. And I usually stick some cheap um, earphones in in case, you know, I don't want to disturb anyone else if I carry it with me. It means that if you go on a walk and you have a quiet moment and you think, maybe I'll see if I can hear something, that becomes an option for you. Uh, and I think these are, yeah, these are Texan. <laughs> so I have a few Texan radios, so I've got a number of pairs of those. They aren't great, but I tend to like open back earphones as opposed to my in-ear monitors for this purpose. So, yeah. All right, we'll put those aside and get back to the radio. The radio has a lock. We'll unlock it and turn it on. It shows the time, which is a little slow, actually. And uh, on the side, there is a band switch, which is FM, AM, shortwave 1, and shortwave 2. I will say this is a great FM radio. But, as a kind of Walkman replacement, you do need to have the antenna up. So, here in Toronto, it works fine with the antenna down on most stations, but not all, uh, in the downtown. So, that does mean that it's more of a sit-down than walking around radio, if that makes sense. Uh, on the other side, you have two... Um, digital actuators, right, um, digital encoders, one of which, which is the tuning, and one of which is the volume. Actually, the volume might not be digital. Yeah, it might not be digital. Uh, I always kind of assumed it was on this. I don't think so. And it's got a 3-volt uh, DC input on the side, which doesn't charge the batteries, and I mean, they were obviously running out of space for a plug. Why couldn't it have gone up here? Um, but that's, you know, not usable. Well, I'll turn it on, and we're in shortwave. And I'll just show you sort of the limits of shortwave one here. You'll notice that the rotary encoder doesn't go terribly fast. But uh, bear with me. And also, this display can be difficult to um, to read at night. I mean, sort of during the day. But here we go. We go up to the top of, and there we go. So that's the shortwave one band. So it essentially it covers 49 up to 10 megahertz. Right, so the 49 meter band and then up to 10 megahertz. Which means you're leaving a fair amount of stuff behind there, but you know, it's not really the end of the world. Shortwave 2, uh, maybe this will go faster this way. Uh, so you, you saw that, right? So there's a little bit of a break, and then it picks up, right, at 1165 and goes all the way up to 18 megahertz. So, broadly speaking, for a North American, shortwave one is your nighttime band, and shortwave two is your daytime band. Obviously, there's quite a lot of stuff that's going to get missed by that, but 
it's reasonably continuous within those within those ranges. Your tuning is, you know, it's a simple radio. You're not going to get anything, but uh, you know, five kilohertz tuning steps, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do, so uh, so I've, I've demonstrated the one way of tuning it, which is using the tuning knob, and you can manually step through like this. But it also scans, as you see it says scan, so if you hold down um, whichever button, it will scan up, and it, and it circles around the band. So if you scan up, it will then circle down to the bottom of the band at 5.9 and, and move up again. So what we're going to do is plug this into the MLA 30 plus antenna. And given that there's no antenna jack, We'll do it this way, and let's give us some volume and scan up and see what we can see. So pretty well everything else on here, apart from the controls that I've just mentioned, is related to the clock and the alarm. It's got, you know, fairly reasonable clock settings. Given that this is likely a travel radio, that, that makes sense. Okay, so let's scan up from here. And what's interesting is it's overloading heavily. And we're getting essentially nothing. The radio is heavily overloaded. All right, run the antenna and put it next to, and just put it on top there. Here, heavily overloaded. So the reality is, is that the MLA uh, 30 plus overloads this thing so heavily that it's not in fact usable with this antenna. That was not what I was expecting. I have used it with shorter random wire antennas and had a little bit of success, although I've got to say it may have overloaded there as well. I mean, if you compare those results, since I've got this radio out, we'll compare it to the, uh, to the Texan. And you know, if we just do, I don't even know what settings it is in, but We'll just do a quick ETM scan. You know, just I haven't shut off the, the camera, so just moments afterward, and I'll probably stop this in a bit. But uh, if you just use a, an ETM scan with uh, with a PL330, you know, already we aren't even into. Well, we're now into the 49 meter band, but you can see that it's picking up all sorts of things, and some of which will be real signals, some of which will not. I'll let the scan go until we get up to, there we go. We'll let it get up to um, 10 megahertz. Okay. So that is something that you can do with the ETM scan. You can cancel it, uh, but it still has, it will hold on to. So let's see, let's just get to. Okay. What is the point in The 
the point is we found nothing here with with the Elite Mini because it was so overloaded it, it wasn't capable of finding any stations. So I think that means is that if you are going to use the Elite Mini if you are considering buying this radio you want to buy it for using it outside with its internal antenna and that that's the mode it's going to be used in and in that mode it actually it's it's better than you think right it does pretty well it's um and it's also a, a, a great fm receiver but shortwave is more of a you know a bit of a party trick if you're really interested in going out and listening to shortwave in the park you might take a coat and put the 330 in your pocket instead as you can see with an antenna anyway the the relative um, performance of the two is pretty astonishing um, it might be interesting let's shut this off for a second and I'm going to plug the uh, MLA 30 plus into the Sanjin radio just so I don't have unconnected end hanging out. Hopefully that will provide a little shielding. As you saw before, the antenna can pick up a lot of, can be picked up from other radios. And let's just turn this on again. Put up the antenna, well, out the antenna. Move my water bottle. And uh, let's see what we can do just with the antenna inside by, you know, the computer and stuff. Not doing too hot. All right, so it's finding a whole lot of nothing. Let's, uh, let's stop it. I'm not, he I'm not hearing the time signal in that. Let's, uh, let's, nothing. Okay. Well, let's try. Texan, longer antenna, better radio. So Cuba, barely. Radio Marti. Um, NHK um, Nippon broadcast from uh, France. Yeah. I mean, this is just about the strongest thing that comes in for some odd reason in my little corner, but look at that. 25 dB of signal to noise ratio at its best. In stars with the computer, with the antenna almost sitting on the monitor. So I think it just goes to show that, well, radios like this are a lot of fun to own. From a practical point of view, you could be better to spend your money on that. Or, you know, if you don't need the features of this, you know, a 310ET or a PL380, one of the uh, Texan um, better receivers. Okay, that was a really interesting little experiment. I actually was pretty hopeful that the uh, Elite Mini would work with the external antenna and that we'd see some kind of impressive performance with it. But in reality, it's deaf compared to this. Um, so I think, I think, you know, then this becomes more interesting 
as an AM and FM radio, and you know, occasionally putting around outside. But uh, but that's about it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. It was a surprise to me. Informative for me. I'm certainly going to take the Texan with me next time I choose to take radio to the park. Good night. <laughs>